Welcome into Hitting Hard with John Chuckery here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Today on the show, what did many of you Falcons fans think? How to keep Mariota comfortable, and it was a frustrating loss last night for the Atlanta Hawks. It's all next, Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, Locked On Sports Atlanta. This is Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it starts now. Hitting Hard is brought to you by Bet Online. Head to youtube.com, put Locked On Sports Atlanta into your search browser when you get there. Hit that subscribe button. Leave us a comment. We're just about at 5,000 folks. Free and available as well to download on all of your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify and Odyssey. Give us a five star review there. Don't forget Roku and Amazon Fire. You can check us out on those platforms. And of course, uh, at JMCH316 on my personal Twitter page. So yesterday, Arthur Smith had a comment that I, I viral, I guess maybe is the term or whatever like that, right? That got a lot of pub that he talked about when asked about the connection between Mariota and Pitts. You know, he said, look, Pitts is not putting up Tyreek Hill numbers, but he's having a really good season and blah, 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 and went into some other things. And it got people all frustrated, right? All the fantasy football people, got up in their feelings and came out, what's he talking about this that, and the other, but okay. So I know people want to put Kyle Pitts in the, it's been a bad year and the, this that, and the other. So let me give you some numbers because again, on this show, we don't go off of emotion. We back it up with the stats and the numbers. Okay. So I told you, you can go back in the archives, locked on sports Atlanta, go find my show, go back in the archives before the season started. What did I tell you? They were never going to target Kyle Pitts as much as they did last year. He had 110 targets last year. And I told you they were not going to throw it enough to ever hit that number. So these are the numbers and the stats, okay, is where we're at. Last year, Pitts got 110 targets on 560 pass attempts. That's 19.6% of the time. This year, on 231 pass attempts, 54 targets. That's 23.4%. So his targets per attempts is up year over year. Now, his first down receptions. Last year, 63.2% of his receptions were for a first down. This year, 72% of his receptions are for a first down. Last year, he only scored the one touchdown. This year, he is pacing for 3.4. Now, remember, go back and listen. I said the number one thing I needed to see was the red zone production. Do I think they target him enough in the red zone? No. Throw it up to him. Let's go. Give me some Travis Kelsey, four catches, 25 yards, three touchdown type of action. But as a percentage of what they're doing, they're throwing it to him more. The problem is they're not throwing it. Mariota right now is on pace to have 392.7 pass attempts, 393 pass attempts. That will be a 30% drop year over year to Matt Ryan's 560 attempts. Now, he's going to get probably sacked about 40 times. So Matt dropped back 600 times when you had the sacks in last year. They're going to throw it, attempt to throw it, 30% less, which lines up with the way that they run the football, right? They're the most run-heavy offense in the NFL. The average NFL team to this point, the average NFL team, this includes the Falcons, all 32 teams across the board, average 300 and 15 and a half pass attempts currently on the season. The Falcons are at 231. They're at 73.2% of everybody in the league, including themselves, of the norm. So that's 27%, right? And we just said they're going to throw it 30% less. So again, I explained all this to you. 
Mariota's never thrown it more than 453 times. And he's going to, and we're going to break down his analytics here in just a few minutes. But they were never going to huck it around enough to get to 110 targets. Now, based upon where they're pacing, do you know how many targets Cal Pitts is on pace for? 110 last year. He's on pace this year to have 91.8. So he's on pace to have 92 targets as compared to 110. And again, go back and listen. What did we talk about? They were never going to throw it enough. His numbers weren't going to match last year, but that was okay. The one area that they had to change was get him involved in the red zone. They're never going to have a discussion about how to fix my red zone offense that doesn't include Kyle Pitts. Now, if you tell me at the end of the year, he's three or four touchdowns, do I feel like that's a successful season? No. But I also said, look at last year. His 1,076 yards was the most empty stat in the NFL. Who cares about 1,000 yards when you only have one touchdown? How many games did he truly influence last year? Look at the top guys, the Cooper Cups, the Justin Jeffersons, those guys. Look how they influence games. How many of those games does he influence? Well, you got to have the right guy throwing it. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. You know, if I can quote, you know, uh, coming to America, aha, uh aha, -huh. uh -huh. right? We'll talk about that in just a minute. But this was always going to be the pace of where Pitts was going to be. He wasn't going to have all the targets, catches, numbers, things like that. You know, the big stat that is a bit concerning, and again, we'll talk about this in just a minute, just is his catch percentage year over year. Last year, he was 61.8 catch percentage. This year, he's down to 46.3%. That's not all on the quarterback. Partly that is on Pitts, but it's not all on him. The biggest reason why he's declined in his catch percentage is the guy throwing to him. But he's got to get better as well. He has to do a better job of getting open and route running and recognition and things like that. So he has a lot of room and area to improve on. But he was never going to get back to 110 catches, 1,000. That was not what this offense was designed and was going to be. It was always going to be run heavy, take a step back. And if you throw it 30% less year over year, everybody's numbers in the passing game are going to go down. Every, quarterback, receivers, running backs, tight ends, everybody's going to regress. And don't forget, he's also playing with the guy who's the number eight draft pick in the league. Remember, the Falcons still drafted another wide receiver at number eight. So you have to account for all of that. When last year, what Ridley played? Four games? And then it was Zacchaeus and, you know, all these stiffs out there, right? So when you factor everything, is Pitts having this outstanding year? No. But he's not having nearly the year that some of you think. And he's also getting targeted more than what you realize. They're also including him more than what you realize in the offense. Again, give me the red zone. Give me the touchdowns. Of course, he's not Tyreek Hill. They don't throw it enough to be Tyreek Hill kinds of numbers. But you can still influence the game. You may not be Tyreek Hill, but can you be Travis Kelsey in a game? I want to talk about my friends over at Bet Online. Listen, betonline.net is your number one source for all of your sports wagering information. Look, we got Titans and Packers tonight, right? Packers are a three-point favorite. You're going to have some oddball games in college football and pro football this weekend that may get a lot of influence by snow, right? We're talking about Buffalo Cleveland and some different teams this weekend in the NFL that may get influenced by snow. Do you feel good about something? Do you want to get in early? BetOnline.net is the place to go. It's easy. Take your mobile device, right? Very simple. Take the mobile device, head to BetOnline.net, check out all of the information that they have available to you to make you a smarter sports better. Podcast news, e-betting, scores, stats, everything is available to you at BetOnline.net. 
So head to betonline.net today. Check out all of the action. You want to get involved in NBA, NHL, college football, pro football. Everything is available to you. Check it out today. Betonline.net is where the action starts. Okay, so let's talk about this. Because I came across some numbers that I thought were very interesting in just looking at where Marcus Mariota is. Okay, What if I told you that last year, because I know one of the narratives has been, well, the offensive line doesn't pass block well enough to, to throw the football around. Okay, but the pass... But the pass protection is better this year than it was last year. They were 31st in the NFL in pass protection this year. They're in the top 15 this year. Let me give you a stat. Again, not a motion, stat. What if I told you that last year, Matt Ryan had 9% of his throws that were targeted for 20 yards or more? Nine of his patent, or sorry, 9% of his pass attempts were in the 20 plus or more range. Okay. Makes sense, right? Though the football pretty decent amount, right? 50 something passes and all this, that, and the other, right? Makes sense, right? What do you think Marcus Mariota's percentage is here? Yeah, you know, they don't throw it very much. Can't be real high. What if I told you that this year they are 16 and a half percent pass attempts over 20 yards? They've almost doubled the percentage of throws over 20 yards okay here's the problem though right now marcus on throws of 20 yards or more is ready 10 for 38 26.3 percent completion he has two touchdowns four interceptions his passer rating on passes of 20 yards or more is 51.3 His passer rating on medium throws, 10 to 19 yards. Again, watch me. Ready? Short, quick route, one read, throw. Short, quick route, one read, throw. 10 to 19 yards, 88.4% or 88.4 passer rating. 64.1% completion percentage, three touchdowns, two picks. Under 10 yards, 76.2% completion percentage. Hell, you should be that high, right? So again, you start taking Marcus Mariota out of what he does well. Oh, you want more? Cool. That's good. We've got it here, okay? Marcus Mariota right now, when you talk about on-target throws, okay, one of the metrics you look at, on-target throws, on-target pass attempts, this does not include spikes or throwaways, okay? Mariota right now is 20 ninth in the NFL in on-target throws. He's at 71.3% on-target throws. That ties him, by the way, with, ready, Joe Flacco. Oh, for craps and giggles, do you know who has the lowest on-target rate percentage in the NFL as a quarterback? Say Justin Fields. Anyway, 62%. But anyway, I know. That's why they're three and seven, right? I mean, but anyway, forget. So anyway, so he's one of the worst quarterbacks as far as on-target throws. And part of why Pitts has not had some of the, you know, Kyle Pitts has 30% of his uh, throws to him have been off target. No player in the NFL has a higher off target percentage rate of throws to him than Kyle Pitts. 30% of the throws to Kyle Pitts this year are considered off target. Let me give you another one. Okay. Let me give you one more. Poor throw percentage, okay? These are considered to be bad throws. Again, they do not count throwaways or spiking the football, right? These are what are considered to be poor or bad throws, okay? Mariota has the fifth highest percentage of poor or bad throws in the NFL. He's at 20.6%. Here are the guys. Here are the all-stars that have a higher percentage of poor or bad throws. Ready? Zach Wilson is number one in the NFL at 22.4%. Carson Wentz is number two at 21.2%. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's benched and not playing anymore. Davis Mills for the Texans, 21% in his second year. And then Cooper Rush, who was the quarterback for the Cowboys here early on, 20.9%. 
Then, by the way, the guys right after Dak Pre- or, or after Mariota, Dak Prescott's at 20.5. Flacco's number seven. Fields is eight. Carr is nine. Baker Mayfield is 10. Not exactly a who's who of all-star quarterbacks, right? So what do we talk about all the time? You know, everybody keeps having this discussion about play Ritter, this, that, that, and the other, and all that kind of stuff. The coach is not going to do that. He's not going to play Ritter until they're out of the playoff discussion. So in the meantime, until we get knocked out of the playoffs, what they better figure out is how do you keep him in his comfort zone? Look from a game perspective, 20 attempts or less, three and one, 21 attempts or more, one and five. That doesn't glare like this at you. His on-target percentage, his inability to throw the football downfield. I know all the Mariota fans don't want to hear these numbers. And again, I completely understand what coach is going to tell you. They're going to play Mariota because they don't feel that uh, um, they don't feel that uh, Desmond Ritter is ready to take over the reins, and they feel like that Marcus gives them the best chance to win week in week out. Okay, I'll buy that. I'll I'll stay with you on that. That's your head coach who's done a lot of good things this year, who's gotten this team further than what most people expected, has done a good job. But what I won't accept is you can't keep playing to his limitations. You have to put him in spots that make him successful. Short, quick route, one read, throw. Make it easy. Don't think. Drop, throw, go. No deep pass. Don't don't try to keep stretching it downfield. Don't try to do, don't throw it 30 times a game. Don't throw it 33 times a game. Keep him in his comfort zone. That's where I get frustrated is when we see on the second play of a game, throw it a mile downfield. Overtime, throw it a mile downfield. That's where I get frustrated about what are we doing out here? So none of the metrics line up with Mariota telling you that he's been accurate or all that good this year. But I understand the veteran leadership, the pre-snap stuff. I get all that. And that's what we're talking about. But if you're going to keep playing him, keep him. It's like how you raise veal. You take that little cow calf and you shrink them into a little box and you don't let them move, right? That's Marcus Mariota. Marcus Mariota needs to be treated as if you're raising veal. In a small box, narrow movement, can't go anywhere. I want to remind you that uh, Locked On, uh, we thank you for making Hitting Hard with John Trucker your first listen today, but Locked On Sports Today needs to be your second listen. Look, biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, take of the day, right? Locked On Sports Today, check out that podcast, of course, free and available YouTube, Odyssey, Spotify, all your favorite platforms. Check them out today. And also want to talk about my friends over at Built Bar. Built.com is the place to go. Look, everybody's looking for the same thing, right? We're headed to holiday season, okay? You know you're going to get fat and sassy and load up, but you also want those low-carb, low-sugar, high-protein, low-cal snacks, right? Built.com is the place to go. They have everything that you need. You want something that's got a little different taste and texture? Try the protein-infused marshmallow puffs, right? They're always coming out with new flavors, always new things available at Built.com. So here's what I want you to do. Head to Built.com today. Check out their wide menu and extensive list of all the different products that they have. Check out all the protein bars, marshmallow puffs. Check it all out and put that order together. And when you do, you get to check out. I want you to use the promo code LOCKEDON15. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, the number one, the number five, LOCKEDON15. And you get 15% off your order at Built.com simply by using the promo code Locked on 15 at checkout. Check out all the flavors. Check out all the different things they have available. Load yourself up and get that order together and save 15% by going with Locked on 15 at checkout. Built.com. Check them out today. All right. Last night was frustrating for the Atlanta Hawks because so you play the Boston Celtics, who now have the best record in the NBA, right? 12 and 3 on the season. And you get blown out on your home court. Now, look. I understand it's only game 15. We got a long way to go. We just explained how the schedule opens up over these next handful of weeks until the end of the calendar year. 
But that was a game last night where you played, you had a day off in between games. You were healthy. They were coming in banged up, right? They had Marcus Smart and some other guys that were out of their lineup last night. And they came in and they took control right away. I think the Hawks' only lead in that game was two to nothing and never led another moment after that. Yeah, they cut it to four here and six here and nine here, but they never were in that game to win. Big difference last night. Look, they took 101 shots last night because that's the way the Celtics play. Come down, fire, go, fire, go, bam, 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 like that, right? They took 101 shots and made last night in that game, they made six less field goals than the Celtics did on 101 shots. They took 13 more shots than the Celtics and made six less. They didn't shoot the basketball well. The three-point shooting was abysmal. And, and this is the frustrating thing, because I got these arguments after the game with people. Oh, well, John Collins only shot three threes. Here's the problem when John Collins, by the way, in his last four games is one for 14 from three. Well, he only took three shots from three out of the 12 total. Here's the problem, though. If you can't make your threes, then you damn sure better be able to get to the free throw line and create some plays. So he was 0 for 3 from three-point land. Now ask me how many free throws he shot. How many free throws did he shoot, Chuckery? Zero. He had no attempted free throws in that game last night. None. Zip, zero, nada. DeAndre Hunter, six threes. Two for six from three-point land. He took three free throws. I need, we just talked about this. I need my guys to get to the basket and get some foul. Look, Grant Williams and 80-year-old Al Horford were their inside game last night. They were missing the other Williams last night. That's their inside guys last night. And you did nothing to try to take advantage. He just kept hucking threes, hucking threes, hucking threes. They were two for 13 in the first half from three. They only shot 13 free throws the entire game. Remember, we just talked about two nights ago, DeAndre Hunter was 10 for 10 from the free throw line. Get to the basket, draw some fouls, slow the game down, score without the clock moving. They didn't do any of that last night. And they just kept hucking shots, hucking threes. And again, I understand that that's what Trey Young and DeJounte Murray, that's going to be part of what they do. And I also understand that the Hawks don't shoot a ton of threes, but if you're 0 for 3 from 3 and you don't attempt a free throw, you're not doing anything to help me. That's not helping you win a basketball game. And guess what? John Collins was a minus 17. DeAndre Hunter was minus 21. You got zero production out of your bench. Bench. You know, Kaminsky and who's the other guy? Gretzky? You know, those two guys were two of the threes that they hit late in the game. That was six of your 23. They doubled your bench production. They led the whole way. And what was frustrating, again, that's a game on national television against a high-caliber elite opponent. Celtics are as good a team as there is in the NBA, Eastern Conference, whatever. We want to get to that level. And we were completely outgunned last night. They shot 46% from three, and they kept firing away. Why? Because you were hitting half your threes. Why would you stop shooting? If you're hitting, if you're two for 13, why are you shooting? If you're 50% from three, why are you stopping? See how that works? So that was frustrating to watch this team on national television get run out of their own building. They weren't on the road. They weren't coming off a West Coast trip. They weren't all beat up and banged up. It's not midway through the season. It's at home, healthy, a break in between, all your guys. Let's go. And the litmus test came up stiff, came up snake eyes. That was frustrating last night. Hawks have a real chance to get on track over this next couple of weeks. We talked about 19 games. They need to go 13 and six against this stretch of 19 games. But that was frustrating to watch that performance. That was a poor performance out of a team that is trying to get itself to the next level and get people to believe that they are a much better team this year than they were last year.
All right, we well, thank you so much for making Hitting Hard with John Trek for your first listen every day. Don't forget, make Locked On Sports today your second listen. Biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day as well. Check them out on Odyssey, YouTube, all of your favorite platforms. Don't forget, you can check us out as well on YouTube, Locked On Sports Atlanta. Put that in your search browser. When you get there, hit that subscribe button. Just about where a cat whisker away from 5,000 subscribers, so be a part of our community. Leave us a comment about what we talk about. We are free and available on all of your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify and Odyssey. Leave us a five-star review. Roku and Amazon Fire, you can absolutely find us now on those platforms as well. And then give me a follow at JMCH316 on my Twitter page. Tomorrow, we will take a look at Falcons and Bears and preview the game. This has been Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, Locked on Sports Atlanta. 